When questioning people, like in health-related workplace and police investigations, it's important to elicit accurate accounts of their experiences. The goal of this presentation is to provide a brief overview of some of the factors that increase or decrease the accuracy of people's memory reports. While people usually report experiences with enough accuracy for information gathering, they can still be susceptible to errors. For instance, people can make errors of omission, which is when they don't report something that did happen. People can also make errors of commission, which is when they do report something that didn't happen. Both of these memory errors can make people's accounts inconsistent with their earlier accounts or with other known pieces of information. Memory errors are not necessarily signs of deliberate exaggeration or intention to deceive. Errors are normal and arise for many reasons, including both memory failures and poor questioning techniques. Let's look at why memory errors happen and the types of questions that minimise them. Throughout this presentation, we're going to refer to information gatherers as interviewers, even though some professionals don't use the term interviewer. Memory is a broad concept, referring to different structures and processes in the brain. Memory can be divided into different categories, but the type of memory involved in recollecting specific events is called episodic memory. Episodic memories are a type of explicit memory because they can be consciously and deliberately recalled. Episodic memories contain context details that set the scene. Remembering what happened, including where you were, who you were with, and some of the sensory details like sights and sounds, makes up an episodic memory. In contrast, semantic memory is memory of accepted facts and concepts, like knowing that Paris is the capital of France. It's something we've learned, but we don't connect our knowledge about it to the specific episode when we learned it. Another situation where we tend to lose episodic details happens when we experience the same event repeatedly. We're left with a generic memory about what usually happens. In investigations, semantic memories are helpful to provide timeframes, names of people, and other context. Generic memories may provide an overall picture of someone's experiences. But episodic memories are the most relevant when the focus is on understanding what happened in a specific event. Accurate memories rely on three memory stages, encoding, storage, and retrieval. All people, including children as young as three and four, are capable in optimal situations of encoding, storing, and retrieving memories. But regardless of age, memory errors and forgetting are normal processes and occur for many reasons. What eventually gets recalled is affected by circumstances during the three memory stages. If there is a breakdown during any of these, memory errors can arise. Let's explore each of the stages. The encoding stage begins when a person's brain captures an experience via sensations from one or more sensory system. Not everything gets encoded, there are many factors that affect how well someone encodes event details, including the person's developmental level, their expectations, including prior knowledge and stereotypes, their levels of stress, and situational factors like for how long and how many times they've been exposed to an event, and the lighting and the physical distance from the event. What the brain captures is also limited to what someone pays attention to. We pay less attention to details that we don't understand, details that aren't distinctive to us, and those that aren't central to the experience. Details that aren't central are called peripheral. Peripheral details don't explain what happened, but they might include things like the date and time, the weather that day, what people were wearing, and so on. Of course, what is distinctive, peripheral, or central depends on the viewer and the situation. In a natural disaster, for example, the weather is very central. Central details are, in some way, distinctive or salient and usually encoded and remembered well. These can include details that were stressful or traumatic in nature because such details typically command attention. The perceived experience translates into a memory trace for storage. Memory errors can arise from storage processes too. Not all encoded memories get stored and not all memories initially stored will be retained. Often, without our awareness, our brain decides which memories should be kept 
and which ones aren't needed anymore. You might remind yourself to turn off the oven once the timer buzzes, but once you've done that, your brain doesn't need to store it in memory. That's why, while you're out shopping, you might suddenly wonder whether you've left the oven on. Details vary in how well they are stored. The peripheral details of a memory fade more quickly than the central ones. A person recalling an experience might remember what happened to them, but forget many of the peripheral details. When experiences are repeated, details that happen the same way each time are retained very well, but the details that change don't stay as tightly connected to the experience. During the storage stage of memory, the memory trace gets consolidated. Consolidation is the process where a temporary memory becomes a more stable, longer-lasting one. Details that are central or experienced routinely are more likely to be part of the consolidated trace than details that are peripheral or changeable. This is also true for details that are rehearsed through thinking, talking or hearing about them. In summary, memory for details that are not central, not experienced routinely and not rehearsed will fade over time. The brain makes connections between new information and existing knowledge. This helps memory storage and also access at retrieval. At the retrieval stage, a person recognises information or recalls a remembered experience. This retrieval can lead to recall of other associated memories, potentially leading to another and another and another. Memory errors can arise at the retrieval stage when a rememberer attempts to fill in gaps to create the illusion of a complete memory. That's why psychologists typically describe memory as reconstructive. Reconstructive memory means that our memories of experiences are not perfect reproductions of what happened. They don't work like a video recording. Instead, when people remember, they unconsciously recreate a version of the experience by drawing on information from many sources and merging it to create a memory that seems to make sense. Sometimes reconstruction creates a false memory. The information itself can be false or the information is true only in isolation and not in conjunction with the rest of the memory. For example, when you reconstruct a memory of your birthday party with your brother there, when in fact, he couldn't get there that year. People might complete a memory based on their semantic knowledge, like using a general assumption about traffic accidents to fill in missing bits of information when recalling a fender bender. Another potential source of error is previous experience with similar events. For example, when a victim of repeated domestic violence recalls the most recent occurrence of abuse, it is possible that their report includes details from earlier experiences. They might also confuse parts of their experiences with information from outside sources like books, TV and conversations with other people. Regardless of where memory errors come from, when a person reconstructs a memory, their account of an experience has the potential to become distorted and inaccurate. In many parts of our lives, reconstruction errors don't matter. When we tell a friend about the wedding we went to on the weekend, we focus on social goals like sharing an entertaining story. If a few details were wrong or the order is mixed up, it doesn't have any negative consequences. But for interviewers or investigators, memory errors can lead to inappropriate conclusions. A breakdown in memory processing isn't the only reason people make errors. People may feel unmotivated or unsafe to report experiences, and interviewers may not ask the best questions, which can compound errors. The retrieval stage is the one where interviewers have the most control over memory accuracy. Interviewers can use techniques that affect a person's willingness and ability to give a complete and accurate account of their experiences. One of the most important factors that help people report experiences is the type of questions asked of them. Open-ended questions, such as tell me everything that happened, what happened then, encourage recall memory and elaborate narrative responses. Because people are free to report the information they remember most, Responses are effortful and the person's voice and perspective comes through. The process of searching memory in response to open-ended questions can lead to other memories being triggered, creating a domino effect where more and more memories emerge. Cued recall, those WH questions and how, 
encourage recall memory too, but because of their narrow focus, they only seek small pieces of memory experience, such as what time it was and where it happened. Closed questions, such as did he hit you, was it before or after supper, compared to other types of questions, they rely more heavily on recognition memory and elicit the narrowest responses. Misunderstandings or communication errors may not be obvious from the response. Cued recall and closed questions are specific questions because they tell people what specific information is expected. Specific questions are also less likely to make people feel heard and valued compared to open-ended questions. The danger of specific questions lies in their specificity. Because the questions contain details, sometimes details a person didn't encode or doesn't remember, they can lead to guessing without a careful memory search. Closed questions are even more likely to lead to thoughtless guessing than cued recall questions because the answers are contained within the questions themselves. Open-ended questions are considered the best question type. This is true for everyone. When questioned in an open-ended manner, all people, including vulnerable people such as children and those with complex communication needs, respond with higher accuracy compared to other question types. However, this is only true when they are simply worded and non-leading. Any question type can produce errors if it is not clearly understood or if it contains incorrect or leading information. Leading questions raise information that a rememberer has not introduced. It could be true information or it could be false. False leading or misleading information can damage someone's memory, their report of the memory, or both. And the interviewer's behavior, such as the manner, tone, or response, can also influence an answer. For example, using coercive questioning techniques like peer pressure, bribery, criticizing, or disputing a response can compel a person to give answers they don't agree with or remember happening. This, in turn, heightens a person's risk of making memory errors. While it is important to understand why and how memory errors arise, it can be difficult to spot them. People are not generally aware they are making errors and can be quite confident when they make them. And even when you know an error has occurred, it's hard to know what caused it. The reasons are likely to differ from situation to situation. The interviewer's job is to bring out the best of the interviewee with the most effective questions. Any person, including vulnerable people, can provide accurate accounts when interviewers ask non-leading, open-ended questions giving people the space to tell what happened without being pressured to give certain answers. One, the memory process is made up of encoding, storage and retrieval. Two, memory errors can arise during any of those stages. Three, Although interviewers can't control memory encoding and storage, they can help minimize errors at the retrieval stage. Four, the best way to minimize errors is to give people the space to report their memories at their own pace, in their own words. Five, interviewers and investigators should avoid making assumptions about what happened and pressuring people to provide responses. Six, Non-leading, open-ended questions are the best way to support people to retrieve accurate memories.